The Mobile County Public School System presents Home Room with Nancy Pierce. Hello and welcome to Home Room. I'm Nancy Pierce, Public Relations Supervisor for the Mobile County Public School System. So glad to have you join us today. We're talking about a very serious problem in our state and really across the nation, and I'm talking about obesity. Whether it be in adults or children, it is a problem. And joining me today are two of my favorite people from the Mobile County Public School System. Right next to me is Dr. Wanda Hannon. She is the Supervisor of Health Services. And next to her is Suzanne Yates, who is the Director of Child, the Child Nutrition Program. Good to have you both here. This is great to have you at the yes. same time. Thank you. We're excited. And you just recently returned from an obesity, obesity task force meeting, right? Yes, we did. They had a uh, summit and it uh, invited all the school systems across Alabama to come and to find out what's new, what is, is exciting. Um, Dr. Ivy Williamson, the state health officer for the state of Alabama, was there and he gave us a kind of a state of health for Alabama. And? And um, he said, it? thank goodness for West Virginia and Mississippi because we're third now. <laughs> third <laughs> from the bottom. <laughs> Well, we're third from the top when you're talking about the top obesity states. Oh, okay. So it's not good, no. but we're getting better. We um, have lost over um, a million pounds with uh, Scale Back Alabama across wow. the state of Alabama. So that's a good thing. And In how um, many years? Uh, five. Okay. In five years, they've, we've lost uh, over a million pounds. So that's good. People are mm -hmm. getting up and moving, and that's the important part. So we're, we're excited. How serious a problem, or no, what, what kind of problems, this is what I mean, can obesity present to children and to adults? Um, obesity causes, causes a lot of chronic ailments, high blood pressure, mm -hmm. um, type two diabetes, uh, kidney failure, um, just an overall state of unhealth mm -hmm. and a lot of those can be rectified if you get down to your ideal body weight and that's looking at your body mass index which you look at your height and your weight and you find a healthy range mm -hmm. for you and there there you can find the way to figure out your bmi right yes you can, okay you can google it and uh, there's bmi calculators mm -hmm. every doctor's office has a chart that's hanging on the door uh -huh. uh, and they uh, want you to know what you should weigh. And, um, and we do that in the school system too. At the beginning of the school year, we take heights and weights on the children in uh, the physical education classes. And so every year we have kind of a, a look at where they're at and where they should be. But are our children getting better? I would think they would be because of all the wonderful things that Suzanne and her folks are doing in child nutrition. We haven't looked long range mm -hmm. of, of where we're at, but across the state, we're getting better. So there, there's some things that, with some of the statistics that they brought out at the conference, was that our generation is probably better off than our two generations down from us, like mm -hmm. our grandkids or whatever, mm -hmm. because they're saying that if it's a child that's 12 years or younger, they have one in three chance of being obese. One as in a, three chance. One in three. Of, oh my gosh. As opposed to somebody that's old. Also, just they'll. Um, we're going to outlive some of our uh, children just because of the habits and stuff that they had. And one of the things that the, that they were trying to point out is, uh, you can still be a little bit overweight, but as activity is such a big, big factor that even if you're overweight but you're still active, mm -hmm. that's much better than being sedentary and overweight. And um, they talked about just exercise of just any kind of activity, whether it's walking, running, um, just getting out and, mm -hmm. you know, basically not eating at the same time or whatever. But <laughs> any type of activity, a with you. activity of yeah. the elbow to mouth, that's not no, what that's they want. Not. But it's just like activity that you can be healthier even if you're overweight by being mm -hmm. active mm -hmm. That's right. and as long as because it just helps with your cardio and that type of thing and that all affects your you know your health sure Nancy every, we're all different and so there are petite people right and there's average mm -hmm. and then what my grandmother used to say she's big boned big boned oh, big yeah, boned. that was always a big thing <laughs> yeah. but, yeah, big but 
<laughs> so we're, we're all different. Mm -hmm. And so what Suzanne was saying was you can be big, right? but you can be healthy. Mm -hmm. And you can be skinny and you can be unhealthy. Unhealth. So we want you healthy no matter what build you are, right. whether you're skinny, average, or big bone. Big bone. <laughs> we, we want you healthy, and the healthy part is, is the key. And moving our body mass. Mm -hmm. So um, you can sit and do this all day, but until you move the body mass from one point to another point, mm -hmm. that's what they're going for, is move your whole body from point A to point B, and it builds up your burning of your calories so that's what we're we're working toward this year there's two things actually we're working on one is rethink your drink and Suzanne has some posters and she's going to go over that and then the next thing was to get moving well let's talk about well with rethinking your drink right. they have two different uh, posters which mm -hmm. we can show this on the screen uh, one is for uh, children and then another one is for adults. Okay. And basically with the adults, and we're going to get this out all in the school board system just so we can have for everything is to rethink your drink. Of, and something is like limit alcoholic beverages, mm -hmm. limit carbonated beverages, limit juice drinks such as punch and aids like Kool-Aids and stuff, limit sports drinks and energy drinks, limit sweet tea, which is, oh. well, you know, for Alabama. Uh-huh. <laughs> And flavored coffees, because they tend to be higher in calories and just not as nutritious, just all those uh, drinks, okay? Choose more water, 1% of fat-free milk, and then more unsweetened beverages. Well, what, what, let's go back to the sports drinks, because there are a lot of people that exercise, you know, we're talking about exercising, how important it is to move, and a lot of folks go ahead and use sports drinks. Why? Uh, do you have to really watch what, how much you're well, drinking? Well, some of your sports drinks, they have about, if you like you're drinking regular Gatorade, right. that's about half the calories of what Coke is. Okay. Coke has 150 calories per, uh, I think it's 12 ounces, mm -hmm. and Gatorade would have about 75 calories per 12 ounces. Well, if somebody's drinking, you know, 12 ounces is really not that much. If you're drinking a quart, that's almost three times 75, sure. so you've gotten 200 something calories right there, 300 calories. And so it's easy just to, that makes a big difference and stuff like that. One of the things with uh, calories and stuff is that just making a slight difference in calories, like taking in, say, 100 calories less per day. Mm -hmm is enough to make a difference that even 10 calories less per day is about a pound a year. It takes 3,500 calories to make up a pound. Right. So if you're taking in a 10 cal 100 calories less per day, you're talking almost 10 pounds a year wow. that you could actually lose of just making slight differences. So with your beverages, that's one easy way is just to limit those beverages that have a lot of calories, mm -hmm. but then you want to take and choose wiser with your beverage. Like if you're going to do the Gatorade thing or whatever, get like, I guess it's Propel or whatever, those that have fewer calories. Okay. They're less calories, that type okay. of thing. So, and then for the children, basically it's uh, grow up healthy, drink 1% of fat-free milk uh, and water between meals, drink 100% fruit juice, not all these punches and aids right. or things that have added sugars and stuff. Drink water have sweetened beverages only as an occasional treat mm -hmm. type of thing, enjoy meals together as a family. So some of the healthier choices, drink less soda, juices, punches, age, sports drinks, and energy drinks are never a good idea because of all the caffeine that they have. Definitely. Even for uh, adults. Adults, sure. The amount of caffeine, sometimes you might see problems with hearts mm -hmm. and heart problems and those types of things. So it's just a little bit different take, but it's just, if people can be aware of what they're drinking, because it's so easy to drink a lot of calories. Um, I know I'm bad about <laughs> sodas. <laughs> I like diet sodas, but just the carbonated beverages in, in, uh, by itself, even diet sodas, there are studies that show that it, it sometimes helps keep weight on more than just if you're drinking water or, say, unsweet tea or something like I that. I diet sodas are very bad for the waistline, yeah. mm -hmm. and they're also bad because they um, contain aspartame, right. which 
that could be, Jeez. you know, you know, there's still Everything studies I've been reading about on. aspartame, it's a little scary. Yeah. So, See, and then also they do contain like a lot of phosphorus and things like that. And if you drink a lot of like Kool-Aids and things like that, this is from my days whenever I worked at the health department, we found that children that drank a lot of Kool-Aids, drank a lot of sodas and stuff, tend to have lower iron stores. Oh. That they didn't have as much iron. And so they would be anemic. And so that can all, it all it, a lot of things just work together. So the things like Kool-Aid, they would leach the iron out of your mm -hmm. body? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. So that, you know, that's, so that's why like vitamin C helps to absorb mm -hmm. or take up iron mm -hmm. in your bloodstream. So that's where we encourage more juices and things like that. But you don't want to have too much juice because <laughs> if you have a lot of juice, you've got a lot of calories because just a half a cup of juice is generally about 60 calories. So if you're drinking a whole cup of juice, you're having 120, 120 calories. calories. So you just thought, you know, there, there's got to be a happy medium between all of it. Boy, it's tough. You so know, drink to, more to water. figure it all out. <laughs> drink more water. But a lot of people don't want to drink water at all, or mm -hmm. they'll add um, something like crystal light. So, uh, but some that's of the other all your aspartame. Is, once again, you've got aspartame in those. So what do you do? You drink water, yeah. or maybe. Use lemon. So, you know, right. Just put a lemon in, or some people put cucumbers. Right. right. Lime, you can put oranges whatever. or limes. Well, you can stayed, flavor it uh, with when herbs. The place where we stayed for the conference, they actually had like watermelon slices and cucumber, and I guess like lime. mint or a lime or whatever in the water as you could have. It was very tasty oh, and it stuff. It is. It's very tasty and refreshing. Yes. Definitely refreshing. We need to take a quick break, but we will be back to talk more about this and what we can do to help fight the obesity problem in Alabama with both children and adults. So we'll be right back and uh, don't go away. Nationwide, an average of 24 children die each year. And another 17,000 are injured in bus-related accidents. Many of these can be prevented. The safety of our children comes first. For the safety of our future, obey all traffic laws related to school bus safety. Hi, I'm Pat Mitchell, Director of Transportation for the Mobile County Public School System. We're asking you to obey all bus safety laws. It could save a life. Remember, stop ahead when you see red. Our future depends on it. For me, it started back in 1942 when my family moved to Mobile, and I began my uh, high school career at Murphy High School. Today, it's so important to be able to ingrain in yourself what are you going to do in future life, and you need to be prepared. And so subsequently, everything at Murphy was very important in my life. And so it, it was instrumental in preparing me for future life and future profession that I wanted to be in. So I've come up with the family emergency plan. Great. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. How will we know what to do? You won't. I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Thanks for this, sweetie. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Welcome back. I'm so glad you're with us for Homeroom. I'm Nancy Pierce, Public Relations Supervisor for the Mobile County Public School System. I have two fabulous employees from the school system with me, Dr. Rwanda Hannon, who's over health services, and Suzanne Yates, who's over child nutrition. Um, I've talked to both of you a number of times separately, and now I have you together. And we're talking about obesity in Alabama with our children and our uh, adults. And you said earlier we're no longer number one in that category, which is good. Um, thank heaven to Mississippi and West Virginia. But we're third, and that's pretty lousy out of mm -hmm. all our mm -hmm. states. And so we're trying to do things with our, not only our children, but our adults. Because if the adults can do this, then hopefully the children will do better too. So what do we do? How do, we, how do we fix this situation? Some of the things is just making better choices yeah. and stuff. Not every day is going to be a perfect day. Right. And it just, it really, you do have to do a lot of planning mm -hmm. if you want to make good choices. And some of the things, as we talked about earlier, about just think, rethinking your drink. If you can do that, that can save you tons mm -hmm. of calories. It can save you uh, possibly having, being anemic, that kind of stuff. But then also, just looking at labels, that's a big thing. Uh, another, you know, we have a lot of vending machines around, like uh, between workplaces. Sometimes you'll have them in the schools, that type of thing. We do have a wellness plan with the mm -hmm. school system mm -hmm. that Dr. Hannon and I uh, work on. Dr. Hannon was the uh, one that really went into the wellness plan stuff. 
But um, her name is at the top. I'm at the bottom. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put her in charge of it. <laughs> but anyway, so she's to blame. <laughs> yes, right. That's but right. just with <laughs> vending and things like that, you have vending. You've got to make choices if you're going to look into a vending machine. And a lot of times, there's not very good choices in vending right. machines. You have a lot of things that are fried. You have some things that are baked. But what do you do whenever it comes to vending? Uh, a lot of things, and, and this is just something for us to think about, is like whenever you look at nutrition facts, is there only one serving in that bag or is there two mm -hmm. servings? Oh, I know. If there's one serving, that's better than having two servings. Sure. Because more than likely, you you'll eat, eat the whole you'll bag. You'll eat the whole thing. Even if you know you shouldn't, you're supposed to eat one. I ate four servings of corn last night. Well, that's, that's what really gets people, <laughs> you know, in trouble. Right. Is because it's all about the serving sizes. Americans have no idea what a serving size is, what a correct serving size looks like, or, or what it even, you know, uh, appears to be. Because everybody has supersized everything. Mm -hmm. And so what we think the deal we're getting for our money, we should have more food. Sure. And ideally, that's not what it is at all. Mm -hmm. You know, that heap of french fries would feed a family. Mm -hmm instead of just one person. See, and like, uh, there's a commercial that I saw, it was yesterday, the day before, and it was with french fries, and they were showing how there's only 120 calories per serving, but in that uh, commercial, they never address as to what a serving, serving size nice. is. Sure. And whenever you actually think of what a serving size is, it's only like a half cup of french fries. And a half a cup of french fries would probably be about maybe seven, eight french, french fries. fries. Now Not that's, many. <laughs> that's like your little fingers right here put sure. together, and that's your mm -hmm. serving of French fries. But they never really address as to, oh, it's only 120 calories. But then they sew in this big bag, and I'm sure there's probably 15 mm -hmm. servings in that oh, bag. Oh, sure. Just like with potato chips. If you look at a bag of chips, an 11-ounce bag of potato chips, which is the big bag, mm -hmm. that has 11 servings. I haven't seen very many times to get 11 servings out of a right. bag of potato chips, okay? Well, or I even you like figure those... it out. You know, it'll say, okay, each serving is 27 potato chips, so you take out 27. Well, maybe. And that's, yeah. <laughs> so that's why whenever you do buy, like, snacks and things like that for the house, if you do want to have the chips mm -hmm. or whatever as a snack, get the things that are little individual packages just like within our cafeterias a lot of the things that we get are pre-packaged uh, as for if we're serving chips uh, like we'll have little muffins things like that and they're all portioned out mm -hmm. if you can get anything that's already portioned out yes it may cost a little bit more but in the long run at least you got that or if you're going to get the bag of chips or the bag of um and i keep on talking about chips let's talk about healthier things like She's bag hungry. of pretzels if you talk get the bag of pretzels which are baked and tend to be a little bit better snack than say chips uh actually portion out in little snack bags right and see how you do with that um like if you like pudding and things mm -hmm. like that getting those little snack pack puddings those are awesome, but you got to eat only one of them, mm -hmm. and that's the and, thing. And, and I'm afraid with that, people do think, it's the same with like a fudgesicle, um, very few calories. You can get them for 60 or 90 calories. And so you think, oh, well, if I eat two, that's only 180 calories. And no, that's, a, that's well, not But then you got to think about that 100 calories every day. That could be 10 pounds off sure. of a year, you know, sure. that kind of thing, or not put on 10 more pounds. Well, it, it amazes me that every time I see an ad on television for food, it, they are huge. I mean, mm -hmm. some of the cheeseburgers, hamburgers you see, mm -hmm. there's no way you could even get your mouth around it. It's right. so big. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I don't know. I don't know. Ooh, I couldn't do that. But a, a lot of people, we, we do expect more for our money. We don't we do. want to have just a little hamburger. We want a big hamburger. Or mm -hmm. go to some of the restaurants, and, and if you get an, the size that you really need, you feel cheated. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. And one of the things is that if you can actually take your time eating, and that's another one of my problems, I like to eat fast, uh, is if you can wait 20 minutes and be satisfied and mm -hmm. to know those triggers, that really helps out a lot as to uh, know that, okay, I'm satisfied. Let me go on and do Let me go thing. on and do something else. Having a lot of fruits and vegetables around, that's a big deal just to have as snacks also. We'll get into that in a minute. We've got another quick break, and we'll talk more about obesity in Alabama with our children and our adults and what we can do about it. Fruits and vegetables sound good to me, and my stomach's growling right now. So we'll be right back. I transferred to Biger High School halfway through my sophomore year, and the curriculum there, the instructors, teachers, uh, the whole thing was just a shock to me. 
uh, at Viger, uh, you were encouraged to critically think, and so yeah, I was just uh, well grounded to move on into college football and then on into the NFL. Well, for me, Viger High School was the start. It's where I started, and I'm very proud of that. I'm Ashley Rich, Mobile County District Attorney. The failure to obey school bus safety laws will cost you. It can cost you up to a $3,000 fine and the loss of your driving privileges. But more than that, it could cost the life of a child. That's why the Mobile County Public School System is urging you to stop and obey all bus traffic laws. Hi, I'm Pat Mitchell, Director of Transportation for the Mobile County Public School System. We're asking you to obey all bus safety laws. It could save a life. Remember, stop ahead when you see red. Our future depends on it. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will treat you just as you are. And welcome back to Homeroom. I'm Nancy Pierce, Public Relations Supervisor for the Mobile County Public School System. I have Dr. Wanda Hannon, who's with Health Services in our school system, and also Suzanne Yates, who's over our Child Nutrition Program. We're talking about obesity in Alabama, in our schools, with children, with adults, and we want to do the best we can to eliminate it because it takes lives takes lives. Be, um, right before the break we were talking about fruits and vegetables. Um, are there some better than others? Yes there are some. Um, whenever you look at fruits and vegetables you have like your fruits that uh, basically are about 60 calories per mm -hmm. uh, a small apple that type of thing, a medium banana that kind of stuff. Uh, you have some of your vegetables which we think of more as starches then our vegetables such as like your potatoes, sweet potatoes, sweet peas, uh, your corn. peas and bean, corn, those types of things. Sweet potatoes, I always thought sweet potatoes were so good for you. Yes, I mean, they are. But they but are good for you. Um, one of the things is just to look at, well, sweet potatoes are really one of your, uh, I, I would say one of your better starchy vegetables okay. to have, because you do need some of them, because they have a good source of fiber, they're a good source of vitamin C, and it, you know, the, the makeup of it, it, it doesn't tend to um, go into sugar, you know, break down into sugar as fast as other, like fruits and things like that. Is a sweet potato better to eat than a, 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 a white potato? potato? Yeah, a white potato. I would say so because of the fiber content okay. of just the, the, it's got a little bit more fiber and also it's got more vitamin C and those types of things. Can you eat the skin? Because I always heard the skin on a white potato was really good to eat. Yes, because that has fiber in it. And the same for yeah. the sweet potato. Sweet potato, but the sweet potato, the actual potato itself mm -hmm. tends to have more fiber okay. than what a starchy, a uh, white potato would have. And then like, you need like corn and peas and stuff like that. They're good sources of fiber and stuff, but sometimes they actually have more calories, say then what, a half a cup of green beans and a half a cup of corn. A uh, half a cup of green beans probably has about 25 or so calories, a half a cup of corn would have about 70 or 80 calories. So is a half a cup about a serving? Yes. That's it's not about, very about many. A <laughs> I know, it's not very much. It's not but what I we like, like vegetables. <laughs> it's not what we like. but. Whenever you look at the My Plate, which mm -hmm. is the, instead of the My Pyramid, it's now called the My, my Plate. plate. We that always say to have half of your plate as fruits and vegetables. Okay. Now, if in the uh, world of where you think of potatoes as a starch or grain, which is not a grain, you, we still consider it as a vegetable, but a lot of people may put those potatoes as part of your starch or grain type mm -hmm. of thing, which would be on a little fourth of the plate, but then you'd have to have the other side of the plate as uh, fruits and vegetables like salads and oranges and apples and bananas and all that kind Any of stuff. Any fruits we need to stay away from? Not necessarily, unless you I can't you just, think of any that I've ever heard. They're all healthy for you. Just go with portion control. Oh! See now, See, you I always thought I could eat as many fruits and vegetables as <laughs> much as I wanted because they're. But they, but they do have calories still. Well, yeah. You know, calories. They're not as in, much as that bag of French fries. That's right. You could eat lots more fruits. You'd have a, like a big volume of fruit as according to a little volume of French fries. Okay. And, and it's not all about the calories necessarily. Right. We uh, have fat content. Mm -hmm. So your fruits and vegetables have lower fat content, which is healthier for you than. Um, 
you know, our meats and fried foods and things like that. So whenever you're looking at calories, yes, it's about calories in and calories out, but those calories are so much more healthier for you okay. versus the wasted calories. We have a lot of foods in America that we like that are wasted calories. And so you want to stay away from the wasted calories. Okay, let's uh, give me just, give me five examples of wasted calories. Like just having plain old sugar. Ugh. That's just uh, a wasted calorie type okay. of thing. Potato chips. Uh, yeah, potato Candy bars. Um, a lot of that, say if you eat cotton candy. Oh my gosh. That's just pure sugar. And that's sure. just like, there's really no nutritional value to it uh, that is, that you need that for. Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid, and we, but we grew up on Kool-Aid. Yes, yeah, sure it's did. just sugar and water. Yeah, just that's drink true. the flavored water and leave the sugar alone. Right, and so you, you can have like one little teaspoon of sugar uh -huh. of about 15 calories. Okay. okay. That doesn't sound like a lot, but whenever you look at a cold drink or something like that, a, a, say a Coke or whatever, it might have 10 or 12 teaspoons of sugar in it. Okay, so Whoa. it's just a lot of sugar. Sure. Um, another thing too, besides just like wasted calories, is something that you want to look at too is sodium. Just to sort of get onto that. And we're talking and about salt. Salt. That's right. Yeah. Sodium, salt. How much um, are we? Eating? What should be the cutoff for our sodium intake for the day? The ideal would be between 1,500 to 2,000 milligrams of sodium a day, and that would be not having any salt. One teaspoon of salt is about 2,000 milligrams of sodium. Wow. And that's in a 24-hour period. Yeah. And also, the thing that, that has surprised me in the past is that so many, are there any foods you can buy at the store right now that don't have sodium in them? I guess well, there's some that, that some now. Of your, if you have things that are more your fresh fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. if you think of the outside of the uh, grocery store on the perimeter, right? you generally have your fruits and vegetables, right. you have your fresh meats, then you have like your dairy products and your breads. Most of the things that are processed are inside the grocery, inside that's the true. middle of the store. So once you start going up and down those aisles, that's where you tend to pick up things that have more sodium and you know your less nutritious kind of things. You know, there's a lot of things in there. You know, you got pasta and all and rice and things right. like that. But if you stick more to the outside, outside. of the grocery store, you know, but that's where you get more. Let me ask you: You've got you know you can buy low sodium soups or yeah. just, how do they get the sodium? <laughs> I, how do you do that? I mean, yeah, they don't put the sodium they just don't in, put it in, it. in it. They don't put but it in it. What we're also pushing in the state of Alabama is family meals oh, yeah. cooked at home. If you cook fresh food at home, you don't add any of those things. The gravy in canned soup is processed, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. the vegetables in there are processed. The meat is processed. So whenever you start processing and canning things, mm -hmm. they start adding preservatives, and the preservatives in the canning process adds the sodium and the things mm -hmm. that are not necessarily good for you. Uh, if you can't pronounce it, if you're reading the ingredients on something you and you can't so. pronounce it, don't eat it. Yeah. Mm. You know, so. But you kind of wonder, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. You're just like, what is all of that? But you were talking about the so. importance of, because we're almost out of time, the importance of eating together. Eating together. When we together. were growing up, always ate dinner yes, with family. our parents, our family. That's right. In today's society, they don't. And if they're eating together, they're on the run in the car, mm -hmm. and the kids are eating dinner in the back seat. You need to get back to having dinner at home, cooking at home, and eating real food that has not been pre-processed. So shop in that perimeter of the grocery store. Right. It doesn't take but 20 minutes to throw a meal together. That's right. Oh, this is wonderful. I'm so glad you both came. Mm -hmm. so will you, you come back and talk some more? We will. We, should, we could talk all day. I this. know you can, and I love to listen to you. So anyway, thank you, and hopefully we can get this obesity problem at least under wraps, uh, you know, a hold of it a little bit better. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for watching and for listening.